Hello and welcome back dear friends, it's me Odo. We are back in our campaign of Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. And last time we were talking to the Queen and um, in between episodes I just found out that not this red point shows us where we are, but this gray point it's moved a bit up because last time we did something good. So before that it was totally in the middle, so we were true neutral. So what we have to do next is an evil thing. Good. So let's see if we can do that. Hmm. Anyway, um, let's see what we have to do. There are these three guys who follow us now around. We can talk to them. The League of the Inspiring Calm. Now that the traveling Canabras. Wait, what? Okay. Um, Burning City. We've done that. Common Course. We've done that. Cold waters, what's that? Visit Jernauk in Chili Creek. Ah, okay. Banner over the citadel. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is that we should take present. So, yeah, this will be the end of this. Um, of this part, of that beginning of a long road. We did all these. Examine the campsite. Ah, yeah, talk to the queen. Um, okay. The dragon's fate. Render of scale shed some light on the fate of the protector of Glavis. Much remains unknown. To learn the full story, find something to the render left. Okay. We've done this. Been cleared of all charges, but the rule of the abyss is gone. This possibly our route to its new owner. Ah, okay. We should talk to Chief probably. Shouldn't we? Ah, no, we have done this already. This is justified is debatable, but nevertheless, Chief has held on to, uh, yeah, whatever. While the world burns, uh, talk to Inquisitor Leotre. Okay, a fair will. Talk to Sofian. Okay. Crusade quests. Opening. Wipe out the band of cultists. Find the lost relic of the Crusaders. Okay. Mm hmm. Ask Irabeth how this cabin. Ah. Oh. Ah, probably we can only talk to her now. And we need some pages in Elven Strip for the storyteller. Okay. Okay, then let's get into the campaign. Let's take the tablet with us and talk to Irabeth about this cabot. Ah, here we can rest. Map Nenyo Hidor Who's Hidor? Irabeth Yeah, then let's go to Irabeth 
So this is um, there is Erica. Let's talk to her first. Allow me to say something. Herabeth looks even more serious than usual before you. Oh, I totally forgot about my time. Let's take the time. No one believed in victory anymore. When the demons attacked the city, for some it was a relief. At least the end had come. They laid down their weapons and surrendered without a fight. Okay. I felt the same thing. But I somehow got through on stubbornness and dark hope that if nobody found Anivia's body, she might be by some miracle have survived. And that miracle was you. Okay, you returned my beloved to me when I nearly lost all hopes of seeing her alive again. Then you went on a suicide mission to the grave of Garrison and won the city back for us. Well, someone had to do it. You turned a defeat into a victory. I know it wasn't easy. But you make everything seem so effortless. You do everything just like that. Yeah, whatever. The queen believes in your powers too. But for me, they are just more proof of what I felt that day when I saw Anivia alive standing next to you. You're the miracle we've been waiting for. You're the one who will finally put an end on this, to this terrible war, and in spite of everything, deliver us the victory we so desperately need. With you, I'm sure this crusade will achieve what others, what the others could not. Okay, I found a scabbard with your family name on it in the Great Garrison. Let's ask her that. Why not? This scabbard held the solemn hour my family sought. My father once fought with it. And I took it when I left home to become a paladin. And as it was not stolen, I parted with my heirloom willingly to help someone dear to me. Anivia needed expensive healing, and having no other way to procure the money, I pawned my father's, my father's sword. I think he would have understood. I'm sure he would have given up everything to help the family. Okay. I hope to redeem the solemn hour eventually. There was never enough money, and soon the sword disappeared from the pawn shop altogether. I have no idea who took it. Seems... Like I'll have to part with my father's sword forever. Is Anivia sick? Mm. It's foolish to part with your weapon in the middle of the war. You have the order's coffers at your disposal. <laughs> Say nothing. Is Anivia sick? You'll forgive me. If I don't go into detail, it is a private matter. Suffice to say, everything is fine now. The treatment was costly, but it was worth it. Okay. Eurobeth laughingly traces the name imprinted in silver on the scabbard manor. My parents were loyal servants, yet it wasn't enough to earn them a title or a coat of arms. Still, however humble our name might be, if it is worth something, I don't know if I'll ever see the Solemn Hour again. But at least I have it scabbard back. Thank you. Okay. We'll probably find the sword as well. So it turns out that the Queen has her head of counterintelligence watching me. I wonder why. It's hard to believe you're rich and so humble, you deserve a noble title more than many who inherit them. Yeah, well, I don't care. <laughs> you think the queen doesn't trust you? If that were true, she wouldn't have put you in charge of this army. My main task is to be your advisor 
until you've gained enough experience as a commander. As for counterintelligence, intelligence Amelia and I were tasked with keeping an eye on your inner circle. But you are not under suspicion, commander. You are under our protection. Yeah, that's what all of them say. <laughs> we need reinforcements. When we began the march on Dresden, Reaches speed over numbers. If I order more volunteers to be recruited, they simply won't arrive in time. We could pay mages to deliver the troops to the camp, except I doubt that our army's coffers would afford it. If you can spare seven and a half thousand gold coins, I will see to our reinforcements. Oh. We could spend some money to have some reinforcements, perhaps later. Let's look at the army first and see if we need the reinforcements. I have to go. So, map. Where do I find the other two? Hidor. That's Nora's tent. She's probably in there without all these books that we stole. There she is. Okay, she doesn't look like a historian. Knight Commander, how can I help? There is much I can do. Ah, no, she didn't want to talk to us. Sosia and the other guy wanted to talk to us. Ah, yeah, okay. Whatever. You've probably heard about the wound. I have the one that sometimes open on my, opens on my chest. Can you perhaps tell me if it is some kind of demonic curse? Yes, indeed. I've been told of your affliction. There are peers at the center of your chest. Can you will the, op the open? No, that's a shame. Really? You want me to bleed all your... Uh, bleed on all your... Um, carpets and books well it's difficult to say I know of blades that leave never healing cuts of poisons that stop wounds from healing I've heard of witches curses that are rewarded with eternal wounds and wounds that seem to reopen and heal over and over hmm. perhaps you know of other cases like this Hmm, let's think in 4671, a Mandavian army corporal had all his bones and cartilage turned to glass. In 4700, a scribe in Canabras had all her skin simply come away like she'd been boiled. And in 4638, oh, you don't happen to have insects crawling over you? Locusts? No? Rats, perhaps? Hmm. Too bad. Nora looks at you with genuine regret. Do you think it's dangerous? It must most likely is dangerous, but you are under the protection of Iomide. Commander, he granted you mythic power, as they say. Surely the in inheritor would not leave you to face this alone. Have you perhaps noticed if we open this moment when you waver in your faith, perhaps it is triggered by doubt. Hmm. Thank you for your answers. I'm sorry, I couldn't tell you anything useful. But I will be sure to study this map and consult a few of my encyclopedias. No, you won't, because I took all the books and sold them later on. Tell me about yourself. Oh my, I could tell you so many amazing things. And you choose the most boring one of all. But alright, about myself. Where are you from, Isga? A small piece of land that proudly calls itself a country, though it hasn't been independent for a single day in all the centuries it's, it's existed. They have a lot of national pride, but all of it always looking to the great day 
when they can at last be free from the rule of Chediox. Chediox is yeah. Okay, whatever. It's a country. The Iskari love talking politics. If two of them start bargaining over beats at the market, you can be sure that they'll end up arguing about whether an independent Iska will be a monarchy or a republic. I've always found it funny to listen to and a little disgusting. You see, there are a lot of us halflings in the country, but very few are citizens. Most are slaves. Okay, that doesn't sound nice. I was lucky. I've always been clever ever since I was little. So they sent me to school instead of making me do the grunt work. They, I mean, I don't think that halflings would be good slaves. They need a lot of food and they are very, very small. So they can't reach things that are high up. Hmm. I was sold as a secretary to Lord Axilla Trespert. He's the one I left. He's the one I left with. Never to return, I hope. I was a slave of Lord Axilla Trespert in Iska, my homeland. Oh, what a man he was. He towered over his fellows like a rock over a garbage heap. A true hero. He brought me as a simple secretary, but he made me learn the history of the world wound. All of it. One volume after another. He hired tutors for me, even sent me to meet prominent historians. He didn't want a simple slave, but a slave with an impeccable education. Interesting. Lord Trespert was going on a crusade. He firmly believed that the servants of the good gods were weak and only a follower of Asmodeus could stand against the demon invasion. He took me along as a secretary, a historian, and, most importantly, he entrusted me with recording his glorious story for future generations. In his crusade, Lord Trespert performed many brave feats, but even he could not stand against the world wound alone. In his final battle with the demons, when my lord realized he was doomed, his final act was to cover my retreat so that I could tell the world of his great deeds. Some people have said that he did what, what, what he did was not heroic, just an arrogant moron puffing himself up one last time. But I say curse their tongues. <laughs> my difficult journey ended in Mendeth, where I found my freedom. There I published Lord Trasbert's biography and I don't want to boast but ah, who am I kidding? Of course I do. The book sold in great numbers and made me rather famous for a time. That's what brought me to the Queen's attention. She invited me to her court. After all, she was curious about my deceased lord, and she was in great need of an expert on the history of the world wound. I hope you'll find me useful as well. So you're not just a historian, but a writer too. Will you write a book about my crusade? Well, we are not... Uh, Wayne, so we don't ask that. Do you worship any deity? When I was a slave in Iska, they would beat me with a stick to force me into believing in Asmodeus. They hit me and said it was for my own good. Ever since then, I don't like temples. <laughs> um, I realized there are different gods like Desna or Caden who teach goodness and freedom, but it's just as soon as I smell frankincense, I see the slave driver stick. Maybe one day I'll be able to turn to a deity without cringing from a blow for not being reverent enough. But for now, for now, I let others pray for me. Okay, there are smile trembles and collapses. Succeeded a perception. Nora sounds sincere, 
you feel that she's holding something back. <gasps> but we can't ask for that. Why not? Should we ask for the book? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? She answers like me. As soon as we finish off the demons, I'll get right to it. Just take care that you don't end up like Lord Trespet. Okay. Tell me uh, the history of the... Oh. Uh, how did the world want to come to be? It happened the year Aradan died, 4606, a little over a century ago. No one knows if the timing was coincidental, so it's just a hundred years old. I thought this was older. Or if there's some connection with Aradan's death. But I'll tell you what we do know. The priests and shamans who ruled Takari hated arcane magic and all who practiced it. Wizards and sorcerers were driven from the land, or worse. One of their prisons held a witch named Arilo Walish. We know nothing about her besides her name and, of course, the atrocity she committed. By some unknown method, she managed to harness, harness the terrible power of the demon lord Takari. Together they tore open the barrier between worlds, opening a rift to the abyss in the very middle of the chorus. The world room slowly but mercilessly expanded. Devouring more and more land in a matter of years, the chorus was a memory. Okay, do we want to know anything about these? Then in 642, yes, it took the church and the secular authorities nearly two decades and hundreds of thousands a uh, century. Yeah, century is 100 years. Uh, decades of 10, 20 years, two decades, 20 years, and hundreds of thousands of lives before they decided to take action. In the meantime, Sakoris was only supported by handfuls of By the time the crusade began, the demons had already invaded Mendef. The crusaders pushed them back in what must have been, must have seemed a total triumph at the time. The forces of good easily crushing the demons on all fronts. They erected Drazen and uh, on the lands they conquered an indestructible fortress and the capital of the Crusader movement in 4630, eight years after it began, the First Crusade was declared victorious. Okay. Hmm. In 4638, the world wound suddenly started expanding and a new wave of demons appeared. The Crusaders were all but delighted. Last time, they rooted the forces of Abyss, and they welcomed another chance to prove themselves. But this time, everything was different. Instead of scattered gangs, they faced a large and organized army. Dresden was besieged, and the Crusaders lost all the lands they'd won back there, back before. They had to retreat, and all that remained of Sarkoris was left to the demons. But while the monsters were devouring the pro unprotected lands, the Crusaders erected a chain of ward stones along the border with the world wound. We have Yumide and her hero to thank for their help. It was the second crusade only, crusade only victory, but it halted the wound growth, wounds growth. The catas catastrophe had become stalemate of tremendous sacrifice. 
But 50 years after the opening of the world wound, the Skari found an ally, Baphomet, and with the war, a cunning insidious demon lord, who prefers deception to open conquest. He sets his enemies against each other and lures the virtuous onto the path of wickedness. Traitors appear among the crusaders, traitors appear among the crusaders, secret agents, of his cult. For a time, no one suspected of him, even he was helplessly, and the Crusader movement fell to ruin, where once Whaler proudly stood, now great and dumb cruelty reigned, and outraged was drowned in apathy. In 1465, the church announced a new crusade, hoping to boost morale. They didn't succeed, to put it mildly. Some fought demons in earnest, and for a time they even dared hope to retake Dresden. But the Third Crusade would be remembered as a witch hunt in every sense. Inquisitors hoped to purge any cultist from the ranks of fighters, but instead they got a barrage of denunciations widespread suspicion and innocent victims. If sometimes, it sometimes happened that two orders would denounce each other as traitors and wipe each other out. Much to the demon's delight. <laughs> Just three years later, in 4668, the church put the disgrace to an end. Of all the crusades, that one was the last, the least glorious. Okay, how about the fourth one? Of course, the demons had no intention of sitting quietly, caged behind the ghost stones. They kept attacking Canabras, trying to reach the stone and destroy it, or just scratch its surface, or if even that was possible, befouled it. The crusaders drove the demons away from the city again and again. The fourth crusade last for 15 years and exhausting and an exhausting study in positional warfare. The demons attacked and they were pushed back. The crusaders went on the offensive but were forced to retreat. And all the while the losses were tremendous. The fourth crusade only achieved uh, crusades only achievement was that they didn't let the single ward stone fall. They didn't retake a sliver of land to say nothing of Dresden. So many lives just to maintain a stalemate. You can imagine how that affected Moro. Thank you for your answers. I have to go and dialogue. This is too much text. <laughs> really too much text. Okay, let's look for the other two. Okay. Wow. A rosy war encampment, Wolchiff. Oh, there he is, the ultra. There he is. Commander, let me personally congratulate you on your new title and thank you for for your time in advance. I'm Leotro Hawkblade, an inquisitor of the Church of Iomide, the bringer of light. I require your assistance in a certain delicate matter. Involving one of your companions, young Count Darren Arendey. Okay. Mm -hmm. I ask you to assist the Church of Iomide in the investigation of the utmost importance. I understand that the leader of the Crusade has plenty of other matters to attend to, but please allow me to tell you the details. Perhaps it will explain why I'm calling upon you. 
Inquisitor's open face instantly reveals his feelings. He frowns and looks through you, lost in his thoughts for a moment. I suppose that you have already heard about Count Arendelle's story. I refer to the tragedy of At the Heaven's Edge Estate. Case again, aren't you? Yes, I am. I have several reasons to doubt the widely shared account of what exactly happened at this date. Okay. Uh, I saw everything with my own eyes, and I still remember it clearly, even though it feels like I like it happened a lifetime ago. Yeah. Heaven's Edge was a unique place that still carried the spirit of old Mendeth. Mendeth before the world wound. And yet on the day it turned into a labyrinthine house of horrors, like something only seen in our nightmares. Apologies for the discretion. I wanted to tell you about my suspicions. Everything about the incident seemed odd. Why was the only person left alive a young boy with a newfound talent for divine magic? Why did nobody send to Canabras for help, even though the agony spent many hours? We found the demons dead with their heads cut off when we got into the estate. Now, how were they defeated? Now, did this, now, how did this, how did the disease, ah, I'm too tired, kill even the paladins present at the estate? How are said, who are said to be immune to any disease? If the demons had found a way to penetrate the holy warrior's defenses, why was he was this never been repeated since the tragedy at Heaven's Edge? Okay. You are the only person who can help me here, Commander, because the only living witness of those events is currently serving your army. Your army's root will take you near the very site of the tragedy. Heaven's Edge has been abandoned and sealed with potential, uh, with potent magic throughout all these years, and only the Count has the power to break the seal. He's unlikely to invite an Inquisitor inside, and in any case, he won't like me sniffing around his family seat. But if you, as his commander, express your wish to visit the state, he will be obliged to fulfill it. <clears throat> and I will simply follow you as one of your attendants. There are a hundred ways, a thousand paths and myriad loopholes in human lives that forces of evil can use um, Wait, what? can use blah 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 to their advantage of course. I'm not sure which one of those led the demons to the gates of heaven's edge, but I do know it wasn't a simple raid, the kind um, crusaders face every day. That incident involved significantly, significantly, yeah, whatever, more powerful entity and that is why I'm asking for your help. We cannot be sure that such a tragedy will not happen again until we uncover the truth. Okay. So you suspect that Darren is hiding something that he is so to blame for the tragedy? Mm -hmm. At least he's a bit more reasonable than the last um, Inquisitor that we had to cut down. 
I deliberately refuse to entertain any theories or suspicions so that it doesn't affect the investigation. There is a saying among my colleagues that suspicion is the mother of prejudice and prejudice is married to failure. I can only tell you that Count Arendi wasn't suffering from demonic possession, the most common malaise in our country at the time. Priday Tolrum himself examined the boy right after the tragedy and he didn't sense anything or read with him. Yeah, of course. Do you question Darren yourself? I did, but the Count insisted he couldn't remember anything about the incident due to severe shock. He saw the demons at the very beginning when they appeared at the celebration to announce... Uh, the onset of the plague and mock their victims. He also witnessed the death of his mother, Countess Sivina. That was all he would tell me. He had found the. Uh, we had found the young Count sleeping like a dog on the floor in one of the rear chambers, having drunk about half the family wine cellar all by himself. There is no reason to disbelieve him on that matter. Just search the state yourself without involving me. Oh my god, that's too much text. The estate is abandoned and sealed with powerful blah 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 blah. Yes, okay, we know. You can't get in there. The presence will give my investigation the necessary legitimacy. You have already been to the state several times. What do you expect to find now? And experience blah 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 blah. Tell me what happened. About ten years ago, several powerful demons managed to penetrate the Woodstone area and commit mass murder of all the guests who attended the feasts in the celebration in the celebration of young um, Darren's birthday. The unknown magic disease they had brought wiped out the whole state in less than a day. That was not a unique court casing itself. The demons had attempted such raids on the Navian lands before, but they had never dared target such a well-protected place. Their and Dave family was exceptionally rich and the blah 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 whatever. And I will help you. Uh, thank you, Commander. Now I ask you to speak to the Count and tell him that you wish to see the heaven's edge. Please do not inform him of my presence right away. I will join your escort when it's time to travel to the state. When we get there, I will also require your help during the inf investigation. You will have to follow me, observing my actions as an independent witness. Okay, if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask me. I will remember, uh, I will remain here for a while. Okay, you're one of Pretty Tolerance followers. He freezes for a moment, but he not. Yes, of course. Uh, are you aware that it? was I who killed him. Hmm. This could be a problem. Thank you for your answer. Where were you during the attack on Canabras? What is your opinion on his atrocities? I was on the hunt. A very successful one, but as happens in life, this minor success was a mere harbinger ouch of a large failure. If I hadn't been so far away from Canabras on the day of the attack, I might have been able to help my comrades and prevent a number of deaths. 
opinion on his atrocities. Um, usually people reveal such things about themselves only to their confessor, not to some curious stranger. Still, I did ask for your help, and that imposes certain obligations upon me. Let me put it like this. I spent enough years by Predate Whole Room's side to learn how to keep him from going over the line. Hmm, that's not very reassuring. He was an extraordinary man, the vengeful sword of our goddess in human form. He was fighting in the vanguard, fearlessly taking down demons, exposing the cultists, plots all by himself. He had served the Inquisition twice as long as I have, and eventually his own paranoia and monumental sense of responsibility eroded his mind. May I meet a God his soul. Okay, thank you for your answer. Not an easy topic for me. I'd prefer not to discuss this again. Okay. Uh, nah, we don't know what, who he is. Thank you a lot. Okay, my dear friends, I hope you enjoyed it. This will take even longer than I thought. We don't even get out of this stupid um, tent city. <laughs> Until then, I hope you enjoyed it. See you soon. Bye.